The goal of making a map is to convey information to help a reader answer a particular question or achieve a particular goal. But maps contain lots of information that could overwhelm or distract a reader. So we need to design our maps so that readers are guided to the most important information. One way of doing this is by creating a visual hierarchy in our maps. That means making the most important map features the most visually striking, while making less important features less obvious. So this is a map of Yosemite National Park in California, designed by the National Park Service, uh, who have a lot of experience in, in producing maps. And you can see there's a clear visual hierarchy here. The most striking thing is the name of the national park that's covered by the map. So you always know what it is that you're looking at. The next most striking thing is the locations of the visitor centres, because most people looking at this map are going to be visitors to the park, probably first time visitors. And so they're more likely to, to want to see a visitor centre than anything else. Next down the visual hierarchy are the roads the dark coloured, slightly thicker lines. There aren't many roads in Yosemite and those that are, are going to be particularly important to helping people plan a visit. And then next are the facilities, campgrounds, ranger stations, toilets and so on. And we can establish a visual hierarchy on maps that we make by varying the properties of each map element. So we can, for example, vary size, with bigger elements being higher up the visual hierarchy, they appear more important versus smaller elements. Colour, stronger colours, perhaps uh, more intense colours, brighter colours, but sometimes darker colours, depending on what they're contrasted to, will appear more visually striking than weaker colours. Location, something that's in the middle of the map is going to appear to be more important than something that's on the edge. Isolation, something that's solitary, something that's picked out on the map, is going to be more visually striking, appear more important than something, something that's accompanied by lots of other things, something that hides in clutter. And on a previous um, map, we have added white areas around the circles, illustrating particular crime locations to make them more isolated so that they stand out more. And shape. Some shapes, particularly simple shapes, are more likely to stand out than perhaps the complicated outlines of, of polygons on maps. So we can use all of these elements singularly or in combination to establish a visual hierarchy on a map. So if we take this map of New South Wales or a part of New South Wales produced by the Australian government, we can see that they've used the size of different um, elements, particularly the text, to illustrate what you what you want to look at first. So you want to see the name of the town, Campbell Town. You want to see then next down the visual hierarchy the names of the different neighbourhoods, and then further down the visual hierarchy the locations of particular facilities like colleges. This map uses nothing but size to convey information. So this is a, a map of a, an English city. And what it does is it shows roads and only roads. Um, so there's only one layer here. And what's done is size, the thickness of the lines, is used to indicate which are the primary roads, the, the most important main roads, which are the secondary roads, and then which are the residential streets and, and, and local roads that are less important for, for traffic. So we can convey a lot just by varying this one element, size in this case. We can also think about colour. So this map shows winds uh, in the North Atlantic and we can see that stronger winds are associated with brighter colours so that we can immediately see where the wind is strongest. Now here it's supported by other elements, so the speed of the movement because this is an animated map, but the brightness of the colours, the intensity of the colours is the primary thing that shows us what's the most important thing to look at on this map. Now colour sometimes doesn't necessarily mean yellows and, and, and reds and blues, it can mean grayscale uh, with, in this case, the, the most important elements being the darkest uh, and then lighter shades of grey being used for less important elements. Here to show the tracks of particular hurricanes in the Caribbean, 
uh, and the lighter colours, the less intense colours, lower down the visual hierarchy to show the outlines of countries so that you get an idea of where the hurricane tracks are. And we can combine these different elements, size, colour, location, isolation and shape, to create a nuanced visual hierarchy for our maps. So going back to the first map that we looked at, we can see that all of these elements are being used together. Size of text, colour is being used, the central location of, of the largest label, uh, for example, the isolation of the names of visitor centres by putting a shaded box behind them so that they clearly stand out from the, the lower layer, the, the, the surrounding uh, hill shade layer that shows you where hills and valleys are. So by combining all of these different elements together, we can help the reader understand what are the most important things to look at on a map.